Okay, so in today's math lesson, we're putting a lot of things together here. We're using expressions, we're figuring out some real-world scenarios, we're creating charts, and we're graphing results as well. And on top of all of that, we're going to be talking about independent variables and dependent variables at the same time. So let's begin. We have Caleb. He's saving money in a cookie jar. He's starting with $25. That's interesting. He's going to add $10 to that cookie jar each week. All right, so every week where W is going to equal our number of weeks. So I'm going to put that in here. My amount of weeks, W, there's my variable right there in parentheses. And the amount of money he's going to save is a T. So we have our little W there. We have our T over here. So here's my total dollars. All right, and that's going to be a little T. And since we're starting with $25 and we're adding uh, $10 every week, my zero week is going to be that $25 that he already has. Now, as far as an expression is concerned, if he's, if he's gaining $10 every week, that's a 10 times my W. My, remember, my W is my weeks. And if it's 10 for every week, that's 10 times W. But he's starting with 25. So that's a one-time addition of $25. So my expression actually looks just like that. Now, uh, less than six weeks, so he's saw, he, if I can't include six weeks, if it's less than six weeks, if it was uh, including six weeks, it would say something else. It would say, you know, six weeks and less or something like that, but it's less than six. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to be the end of it. So now, after week one, I'll replace that one with that, my W with my one. So it's 10 times one plus my 25. And that's going to give me 10 plus 25, and that's going to give me 35. So that's $35. And as you can see, it's, it is now $10 for every week. So I can just 45, 55, 65, and 75. So at the end of five weeks, he has $75, which is pretty good. Now comes the other part as far as the graphing is concerned. So let me get rid of this piece here. Variables, we have our independent and dependent. This is my independent variable over here. This is my dependent variable over here. And what's the difference? Well, the amount of money he has greatly depends on what week it is. Okay, that's what makes this guy the dependent variable because it greatly depends how much money he has depends on the independent variable, which in this case is the number of weeks. Okay, so how much money does he have? Well, that depends on the number of weeks. Therefore, the weeks is independent, and the amount of money is the dependent. So let's start graphing. I have my x and my y axes over here, and we have some decisions to make. Weeks, I think that's going, to be, that's going to work out pretty well. Typically, my independent variable is on the bottom or matches up with my x-axis, and my dependent variable matches up with my y-axis. So in this case, we're going to have our weeks down here. Okay, so zero week, one, two, three, four, and week number five. Um, and on the side here, my dependent variable, that's going to... Okay, so let's talk about that y-axis. So that y-axis here, this is going to be my total dollars. Sorry, I had to pause the video there the, for a second there. So if things got a little choppy, I do apologize. So now I have a decision to make here. I have to go from 25 all the way to 75. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six values. And it seems to work out. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I think I can fill them all in. So we're going to start with our 25 here. And it looks like it breaks, though. I'm going to put a little Zappo over here because my interval is going to be 10. But it's going to start with that 25. In other words, from here to here isn't going to be 10. But from this point, from this point on, it will be 10 because this is going to be 35. And then 45, 55, 65, 75, like that. So I put a little break in here just to show that that pattern or that interval is different between 0 and 25. And then I can simply plot what I need. I have these guys here, and here they are. Okay. And what I'm not going to do is actually connect these guys. And I'm not going to connect them because I don't have in-between scenarios. In other words, this is week 1. And this is week two. I don't have a week and a half how much money he's going to have because perhaps he's getting money all at one, one time. So I don't have in-between scenarios. So I'm not going to connect these values at all. Okay? 
But okay, that's the deal, folks. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.